Hello and welcome to the Blue Open Studio tutorial video series. The topic of this video will be project localization or multi-language. And in this video, we will be discussing how the multi-language feature works and the properties of the multi-language feature. And then we will demonstrate configuring the multi-language feature. So with project localization or multi-language, you're able to quickly translate the project's user interface into multiple languages using either machine translation, such as Google Translate or a human translator. You switch through the project's configured languages during runtime with a simple function call. And the function is set language. And then inside of parentheses, you give the language ID number as the parameter. The translation table is a worksheet that you use to create the multilingual interface or MUI for your project. This is different from changing languages of the development environment itself. That language change is done inside of the language command on the view tab of the ribbon. The worksheet itself is divided into a source column, which contains the original pieces of text that you enter into your project during development, and a target column, which contains the translated equivalents of those items that are in the source column. We will now look at how to configure the multi-language feature inside of Blue Open Studio. In order to access the multi-language feature, we will have to go to our Project Explorer to the Global tab. At the very bottom of the list, we'll see translation. Double click on that to open up the multi-language option. And in here, it's set up like a worksheet with a header and a body. On the header, we have the options for the entire feature, where in the body, we will see columns for the source text and then the selected target language translations. So on the header, we have the checkbox to either enable or disable translation what our source language is. This is a language that the application was typically developed in. And then we have the option for the startup target language. So once we configure multiple languages, we can come here and select which one we want to have as the startup language and the application runs. Then we have target language settings. We have a select field here, which is where we select what target language we want to configure and then add remove buttons next to it to add or remove additional languages. And then we have the format for the date order and the date separator and the fonts. These are specific to the selected language. They are not universal. So for us, what we will do for this example is we will add in German and we'll see that it says German dash Germany. And then in parentheses, we see a four digit number. That four digit number is the language ID that we need to pass to that set language function. So once we add it in, we see that we have selected. And now if I were to change the date order here to year, month, and day, if I drop down the selection and select English again, we see that it goes back to the original setting of month, day, year. So this is, these settings are for individual languages. And now I could come up here for startup and select German if I wanted to instead of English. And then below that, we have an advanced option. And in here are some additional advanced settings if we need to configure the feature in order to accommodate some additional functions or delimiters, for example. So we can ignore edge and spaces. If there is a blank field for the translated text, it will keep the original translate before parsing strings into curly brackets. So if we were we wanted to translate a string value before we actually display it. Enable alarm and event delimiters. I'm going to leave everything here set at default. And then we have to the right of that refresh project text. And what this does is this will go through and run a verify in the application and recompile all of the text that is in the application. So if we made some changes, since we've opened this last, it will go through and it will recompile that. Now it's required once you run this to close the translation table and open it again in order for it to refresh the worksheet body down here. And then lastly, we have an import option where we can browse to a CSV or TRA file and import in the 
contents of those files as an additional language. And last but not least, we have a filter over here called origin. And what this does is this allows us to filter out different texts from different sources. So if we wanted to look st strictly at combo boxes, or if we wanted to look at alarm controls, we can do that. I'll leave it set at all text. And now you notice that there is just a single target column. If I were to add another language in, for example, French, we see that we still have one target column. That's because the target column corresponds to what we select here in this dropdown. I'll remove the French and select German again. So now we will add in our additional language. And instead of typing things in, there is a file in the training files folder that we can use. So I will open up Windows Explorer and navigate to that. And the file is an Excel file called multi-language. So once I open it, we see here that we have a single table called translation tables. And we have two columns. Column A is the English equivalence. Column B is the German translation. What I can do is select this entire cell range and then come back in. And if I delete this source column, I can now paste those in. And don't worry, just because I deleted the text from the source column does not mean it deleted it from the rest of the application. This is simply the language table for translation. So now what I can do is I can save my multi-language and I will close my translation table. And then I will go back to my screens and open up my header. And I will place two new buttons down on the screen. In the first button, I will configure with a caption of English. And under the command, I will use a built-in function. So I'll hit the dollar sign to bring up the autocomplete set language. And then I will give it the number for English, which is one zero three three and then i will copy this button and then i will change this from one zero three three to one zero three one and then i will change the caption to german and then i will save my screen and close but before I start the runtime, I'm actually going to go back in. I will open my multi-language worksheet. And you'll see, though, that I have English selected. So the target field is going to be blank. Additionally, you can see some new text that has appeared. So if I go to German, which we've already added some in, you see that there is new ones underneath. And that is because what it does is whenever you open a screen, if there is any text that hasn't been added to the translation worksheet, it will add that in when that screen is opened or when it's saved. So now we have two entries that we want to add to, and they are the English and German fields. So we will add in the German translations for those. So English will be E-N-G-L-I-S-C-H, and then German <coughs> will be D E U T S C H E. And the other two we will leave blank. I'm sorry, the other three. And we will save. And then close the translation table and then start the runtime. So now when we come up, we're in English. If I click on German, you see now that some of the buttons and text has been translated over to German. If I click English, it brings me back over. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact ProFace America Technical Support by phone at 
289-9266, option 2, or by email, support at profaceamerica.com. You can also visit our website, profaceamerica.com, for drivers, manuals, FAQs, and other product and software information. Thanks again, and have a great day.